A closer look at Harvard's choice on fossil fuels. Midtimes.com Homepage Today's Paper Video Most Popular Edition U.S. Slash Global Search all Midtimes.com The Opinion Pages World U.S. NY Slash Region Business Technology Science Health Sports Opinion Editorials Columnist Contributors Letters The Public Editor Global Opinion Arts Style Travel Jobs Rate Real Estate Autos Climate Change October 4, 2013, 4.50 p.m. A Closer Look at Harvard's Choice on Fossil Fuels by Andrew C. R. E. V. K. I. N. Students from Abbar Divis plan out strategic tactics to add go fossil free. At 350 at endowment here fix number sign student power http colon slash slash t dot co slash all cusk kc. Alvi et alvi kc October 4, 13. The student effort to get universities and colleges to sell off their investments in companies hawking fossil fuels continues, as can be seen in the Twitter item and photo above from Bard College. But on Thursday, Harvard University President Drew Gilpin Faust released a long and reasoned explanation of why the school will not remove fossil fuel investments from its portfolio. Her arguments were mostly macroeconomic why disinvest when society still buys the company's products. And financial the endowment supports school operations, scholarships and much more although she also wrote that an endowment shift would appear to position the university as a political actor rather than an academic institution. The organization leading campus efforts to go fossil-free responded, This is the fight we've been waiting for, said Jay Carmona, the divestment campaign manager for 350.org. Getting a clear rejection from a board of trustees or college president only serves to clarify the fight that's underway on campus. Students are not backing down they're getting more fired up by the day. Tim DeCristafer who served time in federal prison for obstructing auctions of energy leases on federal lands and is now enrolled at Harvard Divinity School, posted the reasoned rebuttal via Wynn Stevenson's blog at The Nation. It's worth reading both Faust's and at Christopher's arguments in full. The recent Harvard speech by Stevenson lays out his argument, largely echoing de Christopher's. You can read my thoughts below, but first I ask Robert N. Stavins, a Harvard environmental economist long focused on climate policy. For his view on the matter. Here's his reply. In my view, President Faust made the right decision. Divestment would at best be a symbolic action only, without meritorious direct effects. But can't symbolic actions be valuable? The problem is that symbolic actions often substitute for truly effective actions by fooling ourselves into thinking we are doing something meaningful about a problem when we are not. But can't symbolic actions be merited for moral crusades? Yes. But climate change is fundamentally a scientific, economic, and political challenge. Viewing it as a moral crusade will only play into and exacerbate the political polarization that is already paralyzing Washington. Divestment of fossil fuel stocks would hurt, not help efforts to address global climate change. First, natural gas is the crucial transition fuel to address climate change. The reason for the drop in U.S. CO2 emissions is the increased use of natural gas to generate electricity. Second, if divestment were to reduce the financial resources of coal, oil, and gas companies which would not do this would only reduce research and development at those same companies of carbon capture and storage technologies, other key technological breakthroughs, and renewable sources of energy the fossil fuel companies are carrying out much of the R&D on renewables. Harvard's real contributions to fight climate change and promote sound climate change policies will be through our products, research, teaching, and outreach. That is how this great university has made a difference on other societal challenges for decades and centuries, and it is how we will make a difference on this one. It'll come as no surprise that I see merits and limits in all of these positions. My stance as a biological and professional middle child has come up before. But I do find Faust's argument weakened by her failure even to acknowledge that existing definitions of endowment and fiduciary responsibility the duty of trustees to build endowments, need a fresh look. I'd love to see campus conversations focus less on specific pledges to dump shares of fossil fuel companies, which get complicated in a hurry, as Stevens explains, despite assertions that this is a simple issue, and focus more on broadening everyone's sense of what constitutes our endowment. I articulated this position on divestment last fall in a Harvard discussion of the legacy of Rachel Carson which starts about one hour in on the video here putting my main point the 